here's my critique of you guys, okay? If you had one dog and you came out here and we had this nuttiness, I would say it could be the dog. The dog. You have two dogs that have no hold back in them. You guys, this is out of control. Yes. It's at this moment right here that I realize we have a big problem. A dog that is willing to do that to its best friend is willing to do a lot of things. There is no impulse control in really either of these two dogs. And in this video, you are going to see a dog significantly calm down in a one hour session due to the methods that I'm going to show you, which are the grabbing method, the butt flip method, the fake leash takeoff method, and the doorway method. I don't believe you're going to see these methods in any other video and the proof's going to be in the pudding and I'm going to walk you through every single thing that I do so that you can do it with your own dog at home. The answer to craziness, the answer to lack of impulse control is not, oh, if you're just calm, your dog will naturally be calm. Oh, if e-collars will make your dog calm. Oh, sits and stays and downs and being operant is going to make your dog calm. Oh, Prozac's going to make your dog calm. None of those things really work nearly as well as my methods to calm a dog down. And I'm going to show you all of them and talk you through it. And, and your dog may not be this crazy. Your dog just may have crazy moments. And you're going to see the first grab right there. Okay, I'm realizing the dog cannot calm itself down. So I'm going to need to calm it down. You can hear its tail hitting. This is a big fun game to the dog, but it's not a big fun game. It can't be a big fun game. And then the dog's been there five minutes. I can't expect perfection. So the dog relaxes a little bit. So then I give, I lessen the pressure. You grab the dog, they lessen, they start to calm down. You don't let go until they calm down. Okay. Legs are shaking and it's off again. But at least I got my first grab in there, my first calm down in there. And we have more battles with this dog. Every doorway to this dog is a thing to be flown through. Every dog scene is a thing to be flown at. Every time a leash is taken off, both these dogs go, I'm going to fly away at 100 miles an hour as fast as I possibly can. Those things are antithetical to calmness. Now, they brought the dog to me because of dog reactivity and dog aggression, but that's not the problem. Okay, This dog likes dogs. The problem is the reckless abandon. The problem is what you saw in that freeze frame at the beginning where, yeah, dog fight's going to happen if this dog runs at another dog like this. If there's the just energy meeting, energy fights are going to happen. This dog likes dogs. This dog likes Prince. You're going to see it meet a few dogs, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because that's not the problem. Calming this dog is the problem in all these different situations. These owners have done a good job at operantly training this dog of constantly asking sits and downs and stays, right? These are Malinois mixes. They watched videos. They, they, but that's not that. You got to stop asking cues with your crazy dog. You have to train your dog to calm its brain down on its own and to make its own choices. Leaving me for another dog, that's not the way this thing works. And she's still, so I walk into her. And then you're going to see a sit right there. No cue. I didn't ask a cue. I'm not asking a cue. And then you're going to see her. Watch this. I'm going to back, back up. She, oh, and she knows where I am. That movement of her without a cue coming back to me was what bought her the ticket to meet this other dog. And there is no other thing that's going to buy her a ticket to meet another dog. Female or male? Female. No, no other thing was going to get her to that other dog except her voluntarily looking at me without a cue. She knows where I am. And you're going to see a first butt flip method right here. Bink. And then look at her behavior. Oh, okay. You're here, guy. No cue given. Oh, why do I say no cue given? Because these guys rightly so. And what a lot of people do is they watch videos on how to do sits and downs and, and they meet a dog and they instantly ask to sit and the dog kind of listens, but never looks at them. Yeah. But I don't care about that. I care about the dog learning on its own that it cannot go from point A to point B, whether that's a doorway or to a dog or from when the leash is taken off, going from point A to point B because it feels like doing it. There needs to be hesitation in these moments that your dog knows on its own it needs to hesitate okay doorways are things to be flown through dogs are things to to be flown at when the leash is taken off they're to be flown out of there as fast as humanly possible and we have to change that mindset another grab this is going to be a little more i'm going to up so i grab because i'm trying to take the leash off and she's a wiggly worm 
She has to calm, and this is not a big game. She thinks it's a big game, but it's not. Look at the paw come up. My arm, that's not that's not what we're doing. That paw up is a way to her to, her to control everything. And then she starts to, every time the dog gives, you give. Even if they give 5%, you then give, you lessen the, the hold 5%. That's how this thing works. That's how grabbing of a dog works. You don't let them get out of it, but then every time they give, you give. Okay? Hey, if this video is unique, if this video has helped you, hit that subscribe button. We're going to go to original audio in a minute. Now, dogs off leash at a door where you're going to see my on leash door method. This is the off leash door method. They're not, the opening of a door is not something to simply be thrown, flown through. If you want to fit, help that leash reactivity, if you want to help all these impulse control problems naturally, and then a check in with me and then through the door. Do I expect a dog to just walk through the door super duper calmly? No, we're 20 minutes into the session now. So I don't expect perfection. And these owners have done the best that they possibly can. They rescued two Malinois mixes. They have done what other people have told them to do with asking cues and whatnot. They just needed to learn how to calm the dog. Here's my critique of you guys, okay? If you had one dog and you came out here and we had this nuttiness, I would say it could be the dog. The dog. You have two dogs that have no hold back in them unless they're given a cue. Okay, you have, you have conditioned. Laura, please come over here. Let them bark. Okay, you have conditioned your dogs to be like this. You did not hit the bad lottery twice. This is something you guys have inadvertently done. And I think you have really good cues. I think you have a really, probably a really good wait at door stay and then a go release yourself and go as completely insane as you want to go off leash. They're out of their minds, these two dogs. They're out of their minds. You guys, these, the, the anxiety level in them, their bodies having an, I realize you drove a long way. I realize you came from a home. I realize all that. I'm not seeing just energy. I'm seeing, I get it. You have a part Malinois and a part German, two part Malinois. I, I get all, I get that too. I get that they're kind of working dogs. They have no ability. And I'm not saying when you're at home, they don't sleep. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying that there is, this is, look at them. Are, are you seeing what I'm seeing or are you just desensitized to it? And you think oh, this no. is how dogs, dogs are. This is, because it's not. this is wilder than usual. But I know, I believe it's wilder than usual. Um, and I realize I haven't told you to do anything about it. You guys, this is out of control. Yes. It needs to be a holistic approach. It can't just, one, you have to be less operant. I say you're doing tricks down there that, with this one. Yeah. Yeah, Forget tricks. Okay. Like, it's enough asking this dog and this dog going, what do I do? You're down there, you're doing tricks as opposed to sit your butt down, lie your butt down, and on a bark of correction and you being like, it's enough of this nonsense. It's like too much redirection, it's too much operant training, as opposed to grab them, let them feel your strength, and over time they learn to calm down. Coupled with the leash, the leash method, which is at the door, you release them, you release them, and they fly out the door at a million miles an hour, and they hit the end of the leash. And then they slowly start to go, oh, maybe I shouldn't fly out the door at a million miles an hour on themselves. And so what I would be doing with this one is being, is, is we're gonna have this fight, and you're gonna lose this fight, and you might as well just calm yourself around me. Sit. Okay. Okay. Oh. That got your attention. Okay. You're on leash. It's on leash. I don't know where the going where you want to go on a leash. There's a leash on you. Okay. So that is the process to start this process. There is no cue for them to fly away from you and go insane. There's a cue for them to leave and be free. And if you can tamp them down in that fly away, you're gonna actually tamp them down 
to when we get down to that pasture and they're just not these dogs that literally run into each other as hard as they possibly can. The minute one of them calms down, the other one calms down. Yeah. The minute the whining and the, the body movements calm from this one, calms from this one. They just rev each other up. Sit, stay. Okay. Exactly. Sit. Stay. Okay. That's where we start, I believe. Sit. Stay. She's on to me now, which is fine. Okay. Yeah, dude. Life, life is not what you think. You do not have it all figured out. Okay. There we go. And then you eventually let her off. Now watch this release. Okay. She'll eventually, she'll get it. She'll get it. Oh my God. Wow. Look at this, like a, now she kind of is getting it, but you got to eliminate those brain like spikes that they get. The release here when you came in, the spike down there, you got to get, get those spikes blunted, I would say, and then the brain patterns will start to, you'll, they'll spike less. It still hasn't gone back up. Like this dog's brain got shaken up in a very good way. This is the calmest we've seen this dog. A butt flip. Okay, so you bring him back, his, he's here, and then you go left leg, and you go like this with a correction, then he flips around, then you just keep doing it as he's looking at the, and it's a fight worth having. Okay. Like it's better to go to that and do it a hundred times than to go to, than to go to the treats and start doing rollovers. Okay. I'd rather have the battle of a hundred butt flips than go to old, go to what I've always done and go to operant stuff. You think this is happiness? I think this is, I think this is like anxiety coupled with happiness. I think this is a brain's inability to calm itself coupled with happiness. There's happiness in there. You don't want to give them a cue for them, for them hesitation. You want them to learn hesitation on their own without a cue. Doorways aren't things to be flown through or to be pawed at. That's not what they are. They are things to wait at without any cues. Stay right there. Okay. Okay. That rundown was 80% of what it would have been. If this unique video to help you calm your dog with doorways and leash and grabs was something you haven't seen before, please hit that subscribe button. Here, here I am doing another doorway method with the door opening the other way and look, proof's in the pudding. Look at the calm walkthrough. Hit that subscribe button, please, and hit that like button.